friends, it's Pat Sloan here. So cheers, cheers to those of you having an afternoon coffee or a morning whatever, an evening drink while you're watching. <laughs> and also thank you to those of you who have sent me Starbucks and sent me thanks here on YouTube via the giving option. Uh, those go to uh, supply refreshments for me while I'm filming. <laughs> so today we have Millie's dresses and we're going to do the whole bottom row. Okay, so because that way by the end of the month then we can be finished, we can wrap Millie up in a bow and have all of the Millie's dresses done. Uh, so we're gonna do Millie's dresses and then we also have the kickoff of the Peace and Quilt which is a um, monthly project done from my friend Susan Aki and Lisa Alexander's book. So we'll do that as well. And a couple other little things in between. So this is the Millie's Dresses pattern and I uh, am doing the full quilt with Tilda fabric. Uh, and so it is coming out so darling. And we have a little quilt parade of some more of your Millie's dresses, which, so stay tuned, stay tuned. So my, the two dresses from my bottom, four dresses, sorry, four, four dresses from my bottom row. Here are the first two. And I am thinking my accent, get my hand over here, here. My accent's going to be this purple of mine. I'm going to stick my head around the corner. I think that'll be the one that I use for the inner, inner border on here and, and uh, binding. I think that's what I'm going to use is that guy. So I've got these two dresses, which is green. That green is the only one that's, yeah, the only one that's really that green. There's one that's a greeny teal. Uh, so it's kind of fun to have that green. And the red, this is really the only red of this shade, which is kind of like a, um, that's kind of like a tomato soup red, right? Yeah. That's what I think of it as tomato soup bread. So that these are the these are the four. So let me just show you where where they're going to go on here, because this is for me. You know, I got to have them in the right place at this point. You know, when it's not throwing them up here, I want to be sure that the teals are spread out because there are a lot of teal, 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 teal. So I want to be sure that they're just you know not. There we go. You probably didn't see that, did you? Well, I'll do it again. So <laughs> there's teal, 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 uh, tealy blue, and that's greeny teal. And then there's a blue, a light blue. And so, you know, I just don't want them all like lined up in a vertical or making a horizontal. You know, I don't want any them to create any kind of a visual. And then here's the red, but this is pink, this is pink. That's pinky red. It's not the same shade of red. Uh, and then the only green, the golds, three golds, and then a couple of ones that read more blue. So there, there they are. And then you want to be working, if you haven't started your border, be working on that. And next week, uh, I will do the inner border. So do that inner border. And then the week after, I will have the outer border on and then that's I think the end that I think that's the end of the month. And so we can wrap Millie up. I'm excited about that. This has been super fun. Uh, so many, so many great blocks that you guys are doing. And I already did one Millie parade a while back, but today we have another one. So let's take a look. Ardella created her Millie dress with a border that would fit her space. So she had this particular space to work in. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. So pretty. I love those pink dresses. They're just speaking to me. So Diane, she's using my derby hat to, in, to include with her dresses. So you can see here how she's making the applique derby hat. That's a free pattern I did for the Splendid Sampler project quite a few years back. In the description box under the video, I have uh, the link to that free derby hat pattern. And her dresses are so gorgeous. Look at that one on the left. Ah, love that. Love them all. Diane is doing elegant black and white dresses. Ah, <gasps> polka dots, polka dots, black and white polka dot dress. Perfect, perfect. Donna's is a full quilt. Ah, oh, gorgeous. And look at the navy polka dot dress on the bottom row. 
and the flower one on the top. They are just so fantastic. Elma's is finished, 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 and it is hanging up. She said that this is hanging on a barn that is from the same era as this style of dress. Isn't that fun? I really love it. Okay, Jackie, her red dresses. Oh my goodness, how gorgeous are they with the blue collars and belts. And then she has also used my derby hat. She said she's going to do four of these and put them in the four corners. That is so clever. Jane's gorgeous quilt, her Millie dresses with that beautiful floral border. They're so soft and pretty. Jean's dresses, oh, I love them. They look so vintagey. Just, I love the orange. Look at the orange one. <laughs> gotta, gotta love it. Julie did four dresses and she has it all quilted with binding and I just love the four dresses. That's like a perfect size. So if you don't uh, want to have a big quilt or just have a small space, that is so great. Uh, Kathleen said that she is using fabric from her mom and her grandma's stash. So the fabrics are 30 to 60 years old that are in these dresses. Oh, what great memories, right? Just, that is such a fantastic thing to do. Linda's beautiful dresses. I'm just loving these. Everybody's finding great polka dots. She has a pink dress with polka dots and a gingham collar on that bottom row. That is so clever. I might want that dress. Just the dress. <laughs> Here is Melissa's pretty quilt. She has said that she's got it all done. Just wait, just getting ready to put the binding on it. Perfect. Perfect. Here's one of Rita's blocks. This olive green just really got me. I just love olive greens and this is so cute. Then here are all of hers and her friend Dolores. So she and her friend Dolores are doing the dresses together. Look at them. So cool. Sally's is done as well. And here you can see a lot of people did not do the scallop border and it turns out just as beautiful. I love that second dress on the top row. Okay, just send it on over. And there's a black and white. Another really cool one. Just a couple more. Terry's. Oh, okay. Do you know which one? You know which one? That top row, that polka dot. Just send that here. That is so cute. It all looks absolutely fabulous. I love the oranges in yours as well. And our last one is from Thelma. Look how pretty this is. They are just wonderful. And she has a gorgeous red dress on the bottom, right, with black and white polka dots. Love, love, love all your Millie dresses. Thank you so much for sharing. Always be sure you are going over to Quilt Along with Pat Sloan where you can see so many fun blocks every single day. Every single day it's Quilt Show over there. It is totally amazing. Okay, my finish of the cross stitch. So here is what I did. I'm gonna put this real close. So I did do the cross hatch, and I'm gonna tilt it so you can see the lighting a bit. It is cross hatched in both directions. But you know, the lighting wise, there it is. Now you can see it. See, ah, it's hard lighting wise, but it's, what am I doing? There you can go, right? You can see it both directions. And then on the cross stitch itself, I used a cream, a cream color, what I use. I used Orofil 2000, the main cream uh, for the company. And I, that's what I used. And it blended so well on the turquoise and just basically disappeared on the cross stitch. Uh, it just does give it texture. So the, there is a grid now. You can see the grid on the cross stitch cloth, but it doesn't obscure the, um, the cross stitch itself. And so when, if you want to put your cross stitch into a quilt and you're wondering what it's gonna look like, this is one way it'll look. Now, the cross hatches are not the easiest thing in the world to do. They really are not. <laughs> but uh, they're not my favorite because I don't like to have to be so accurate uh, and um, I don't like to mark. And so I did run a ruler next to them, uh, next to, it's like kind of from point to point to sort of 
keep myself on track. It is just a regular ruler. I did not use one that you would have with a hopping foot, you know, like the darn, the foot that you use for um, free motion, because I'm not free motioning. I did this with a walking foot. Um, but I did a little video, so take a look. I want to do this guide right to this point, but the guide beam is not long enough. This is as long as, well, it can go a little bit longer, but uh, it's not going to reach here. <laughs> so I'm just not going to change it. But what I do is use a ruler because the ruler I will put at that intersection and have it touch the guide beam. And then I would just kind of sew to it and then shift because I don't want to sew next to the ruler. I'm just using it as a visual guide so that I can stay in place. And now I just shift. So it just it takes a little bit longer, but it's not that big deal. This is not a big piece. It's easy to handle. And so the whole thing is I want to keep until I can get that guide beam to the corner on its own. There. See now it's just about at the corner and there it is. So this is a guide beam uh, on the Solaris, and a bunch of the baby locks have this. Uh, it is built in uh, and marvelous, just marvelous. But this is a little trick you might want to use. Here it is so far. It's kind of interesting because over the cross stitch, out here we'll see it, but in here, and particularly in some light, you know, it's this is showing a good reflection, but in person, it's not showing up quite as uh, much. So I still have to grid the rest of the way out on both sides and both sides. So if you have been wanting to try something, give it a go. See if, if, see if that works for you. Let me know if you do. Uh, I found it to be a lot of fun. This, this piece, I think I'm going to use that hanger that I have with the hearts. Um, that I got recently from Sewing Parts Online that I showed you. I think that's what I'm going to hang it on, but I haven't put that up yet. I think I have the spot I want to put it at, but I haven't decided if that's it. So once I, when I do, I will, I will show it to you. But for right now, it's all, it's all ready. It's all ready to go. Let me just put this over here. All right. The other thing is I got a binding done. See, do you know which it is? I haven't written the label yet, but you probably can guess what it is. It is the horses for my great niece. And I put the red binding on it, which just turned out totally perfect. Just, I just love the red binding. Could not, could not love it more. And that quilting is like mountains. I think you can see it on that. Yeah, you can see it on those light color blocks really well. There we go. So it's got kind of like a mountains and they live in North Dakota. So I think that that's very fitting. So I hope that she enjoys it. Okay, that's gonna go over there. And then I'm almost, I'm halfway on the binding. I have the binding attached, so I just need to put it on. I have a hanging sleeve on here. So this was our uh, sew along. This is the smaller version I did um, with the, yeah, with my, um, ugh drawing room fabric. There we go. Got the words out. So here's my smaller version because the bigger version, I decided to just go ahead and let that be a charity quilt uh, since it was probably a more usable size than this one. Although this is a pretty, pretty decent size, but I decided that this would actually be better for me to hang. So here and enjoy it for a little while. So I've got that. Yes. Let me just show you two kind of fun mail things, things in the mail before we go on. Now, our ambassador, Kendall, so many of you uh, know Kendall from our morning chats and also from uh, the group, Quilt Along with Pat Sloan. So he's on there. He also has his own video channel and he runs a online uh, quilt store with quilting basins out of Australia. He's based out of Australia. So he uh, carries uh, some of my fabrics that he can get there. Not all fabrics will they ship to Australia, so he can't carry everything. But he, when he can, he carries my fabrics. So those of you outside the U.S., you're able to get things from Kendall. Uh, he is super customer service, super Mr. Kendall. So he, he knew I loved the pandas and sent me a big chunk of this Tula Pink Pandas. Here's his, here's his business 
uh, package, ba Quilting Basics. I'll link you in the description box below. Um, but he also sent me, oh, I was so surprised, I was so surprised. He sent me the birds. Here, let me just get one where you can see the bird on here really well. Okay, here's a good one that's there. Look, look how beautiful. And let me show you, let me show you this picture. This is my brother Tom's tattoo on his hand that I am in love with. If I ever get a tattoo, I'm getting the same one my brother has. <laughs> that I just love it. And uh, so when I saw this fabric, I'm like, oh, I need it. And Kendall sent me all the some of all the colors. So if I want to get more, I now have a color matching. Even the even the fluorescent one, <laughs> which is what I bought originally. <laughs> because I think I might have to do something for Tom. Um, yeah, isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> and our friend Marsha in North Carolina, yeah. So she was out shopping, uh, out, so she said she was actually in Virginia somewhere, and she saw these gummies. These gummies, they are fried egg gummies. Oh my goodness. I have to tell you, these these are, Marcia, this was like the biggest treat for you to send these. These remind me of when I was a kid living in Germany and we first found gummies. For those of you in the U.S., you call them gummies, but Germans call them gummies, so that's what I call them. And they did a lot with the taffy at that point in time. That was, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s. They did a lot of taffy things. So the gummy part is in the middle and this white ring is like a taffy, a white taffy. And so I just love it. I'm sure, I don't know if they had eggs back then. They might have. <laughs> and then she also sent me a piece of mushroom fabric. Look at the wee little mushrooms on there. Look how tiny they are and how sweet. And she found me, she sent me some of her favorite wonder clips, which are the little skinny ones. And I have not played around with those. So I appreciate them so much. Yeah, I would look forward to those. Thank you. We are now going to go to the other side and talk about the Peace and Quilt Project, the kickoff. I'll show you my blocks. We'll talk about the process, what's going on with it, yada, yada, yada. Let's go. So the Peace and Quilts sampler is from Celebrate with Quilts. It's from this book. It is actually the one that's on the cover here. And what I have shown is the digital version of the one that I'm doing, the fabrics I'm doing, which are called Jelly and Jam from my friend Joanna of Fig Tree Quilts. And uh, her fabric isn't in the shop yet there, but there is like some pre-order stuff that, you know, like you can reserve it. There's a reserve thing. So if you're looking for it, uh, that that's the one I'm looking for. You can always go to the project page and see my stuff. Now here's the second one that there are now kits for from the Fat Quarter Shop. So this blue version is the one that they kitted up at the Fat Quarter Shop. It's blues and greens and very, you know, just a whole different vibe. And I wanted to do one that was a little different than theirs because they're going to be showing that one. Although it is gorgeous, I debated. Do I just want to do theirs? But the other problem was getting advanced fabric. So I was able to get advanced fabric of the jelly and jam and that way our ambassador Bobby could help me and we could get blocks made in advance so that I'm pretty much just showing you the blocks. Uh, you can you know follow Susan Aki and Lisa Alexander for more details on their blocks and I'm just you know I'm just sewing along just sewing along with like everybody else and so I want to show you uh, the book a bit so that you understand uh, what's going on. Now the book has a whole lot of patterns. <laughs> it is packed packed and I've showed you this the other day but in the beginning are all the single blocks, things like this, where there is the single block with the directions to make it. And then there's a little mock-up that shows it to you. And some of them have the mock-up, but some of them don't. Some of them have little tips from um, Susan or Lisa in these little blue boxes. Uh, and that's kind of how this front part is set up. And then there starts different projects, taking the blocks. So they've taken the blocks then and made different quilts. So here is one, uh, you know, well, this is still the blocks. Wait, 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 here we go. Here start the quilts. So this is, um, this is the sampler that we're doing, you know, so you recognize it. And mine is got a similar vibe to this, but without the blues. I don't have any blues in mine. Uh, and here are all some different projects 
that are taking the blocks. Uh, some, there's actually another, there's like the flag. Look, look at this. Just look at that. Ah, uh, so cool. Uh, and all kinds, all kinds, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. There's hearts, here's um, pinwheels, and there's another kind of smaller sampler. Uh, here's the digital of it. So that's, uh, that's a pretty cool sampler too. So maybe if you want something more symmetrical, you want to sew along, you have the book, you love it, you could maybe do this, this quilt instead. And um, there, is, there is their version of, of this quilt. So the, uh, the, the thing is, we are, we are not do, we're doing the sampler. And they have, a, they have all the blocks laid out. So you can see all the blocks and tells you where the page is that get the directions. And then you work through row by row to create the sampler. And each month is different sections of the sampler. And so we were making this very first one, which is actually two. There we go. Two, two. You can see my fingers. <laughs> there we go. It's two blocks. And so let me show you that. We've got the little shoe flies. So a bunch of little shoe flies and pinks and reds from Jelly and Jam, and then the center. And so I will just lay it out and then I will go and um, sew it. I will do that. So this is, of course they have to overlap, you know, but they're going to be, they're going to be like this, alternating. So mine are alternating. And I think that that's really fun. You could do it a different way if you're using all scraps. There you go. So this is how the block will look for block one, or week, week month one, rather month one, of the piece and quilt. So let me go ahead and sew that. Our ambassador Kendall is sewing along and this is his blog for Peace and Quilt. So be sure you go to his YouTube channel and check it out. And he is sewing with the basics line uh, by Riley Blake. And it is the same basics where I love that ballerina pink. Here we go, here we go. This is such a gorgeous block. And remember you have a whole month before the next assignment, uh, but don't wait. Don't we do that? We wait till the, like, the day before the next block comes. Instead, do the block now. This would also be kind of fun to do maybe uh, this one with a couple of borders for your door banner. You could just hang it on the door. It's a little too small by itself for me. I would want it a little bit bigger, but it is so cute for, I think, a door banner. You could do it for whatever color season you're working in. So darling. And remember, remember the cool part, and I think this is why I had to do this one besides the fact that my friends designed it. <laughs> my, my, my friends designed it. But as we finish a row, whoops, as we finish a row, we sew it together. As you get the blocks done, you sew it together. There's no sashing. And that means as we move along, every month you accomplish, you get a row accomplished, a row accomplished. So at the end, you don't have to be fiddling around moving blocks and that, unless that's what you enjoy doing. But because these are all different sizes, it doesn't really lend itself to that as well, although you could move a couple of them around probably. Um, so there you go. That is, that is it. Peace and Quilt from Celebrate the Quilts. And I hope you enjoy it. Hope you work on your Millie's Quilts. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online. Mm -hmm.